Back. You know, doing this job has been some of the most fun I've ever had. It's literally been a dream come true. And I've accidentally been given the best producer ever, and I have the most amazing level-headed viewers as well. I could never have asked for more. And finally, by hook or by crook, I've been able to corral some of the best minds in the business to come on this show. Uh, but every now and again, with what's happening around us, I sometimes find myself staring into that mirror asking, how did we get here? I mean, I wonder what is happening to my country, our borders, our safety. It seems like everything is under attack. Last week, it was wood-fired pizza ovens in New York. Tomorrow, it's going to be your barbecue. Just wait. Uh, so when do we uh, get some good, when, when we do get some good, got good common sense? I think it needs to be celebrated. And the Supreme Court last week restored my faith in what is right and what is good. The Supreme Court, three. The Biden administration, zero. We had affirmative action, web development, and student loans all came down on the side of fairness and morals. But more importantly, it was legal precedent. Regardless of what a few justices would have you believe, there is a distinct line between your feelings and jurisprudence. It literally was a breath of fresh air to me. The only thing leaving me slightly disappointed was the fact that they weren't nine to nothing decisions. I mean, my next guest is an expert in morals and common sense. And as an attorney, she's a legal expert, too. Please welcome into the show, Rebecca Walzer. Rebecca, thanks for taking the time. That's how I'm going to end it and hand it over to you. I was disappointed these things were not nine to nothing slam dunks. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. But, you know, this is uh, these as much as we like to say the court is not political. It's obviously appointed by certain presidential administrations. And um, obviously, you know, presidential administrations uh, appoint justices that have a certain kind of uh, legal doctrine that they follow, whether they're originalists like Scalia, who believe that the Constitution literally means what it says it means and uh, has its original intent. Or if you, you know, believe that it changes over time, which is how most progressive sort of see the law morphing and they want the justices to be able to morph the constitution with the modern day. So it was really a relief. I agree with you, Scott, to see three uh, common sense decisions, basically. Um, but I really want to focus on the decision about the, um, you know, the, the website designer and not being compelled to write LGBTQ uh, content against their Christian beliefs, because this was a really good, um, you know, decision. But I think that it's going to come up again, because I'm looking, I'm thinking, of the case of Nigel Farage that we had last week in the UK getting debanked and then having seven other UK banks tell him, no, we're, we won't bank you either once he got debanked. And so we have to be really careful. This is a very gray, nuanced area of the law. There will be more case law that will be coming because right now we have the Supreme Court saying you can't force a business to do something against its beliefs, yet we also don't want to see banks and the, the like say, we're not going to bank you because we don't like your political beliefs like they did in Mike Lindell last year. He was able to be rebanked. But if you look at the UK with Nigel Farage, he's not been able to be rebanked yet. All of these banks are telling him no, they're kind of in a, in a, in a, you know, in a block sort of saying no. So we have to be really careful, Scott. We want businesses to have autonomy and freedom, but we don't want them to be censoring and choosing who and what they'll do business with uh, on because they don't like someone's political beliefs. So this is a really interesting uh, situation. Very, very great area and it's and I'm just as a lawyer trying to figure out like a black and white rule that would apply that would get, make both cases come out right and it's very hard to do so I'm not sure how it's going to work out well I mean the the, the compel, you know, compelling you to do something against what you would think is your free speech like uh, the, for the web developer I, I felt good about that decision yeah um, but I I and I'm uh, I'll drop names but I, I I'm friends with Nigel Farage he used to be a broker in our industry he was a coffee a coffee broker yeah. a long time ago <laughs> um, and to see, and he was the leader behind Brexit. So I'm just trying to give the viewers a little bit of a background because you're right. It is a huge thing where basically he's been exiled is a better word, I think, because they're put, they're put, they're kicking him out of his country, his home country, uh, um, technically speaking, not literally, because they, no one will, will bank him and put his, you know, let him put this money on deposit with him. So he's like almost persona non grata, right? But I mean, that's 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 exactly my point. Like we have this really strange dichotomy of we agree that the Supreme Court cannot force businesses uh, under the law to take on work they do not agree with. They have and they decided in Citizen United that businesses have a First Amendment right to speech. So they have the right to use their speech how they want. However, where does that end to the point that they say now we're not going to do business with certain people like a Nigel Farage, like a Mike Lindell, because we don't agree with their political beliefs. We can't go to that extreme. 
extreme either. So where is the black and white line that we can set in stone for businesses going forward? This is assured to us and 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 it's very complicated. It's it's that's always the problem with the law. People think that oh the law is written and it's very black and white. The truth is it's gray. You know, I could tell some tell you somebody murdered somebody and you'd think, oh, first degree murder, they're going away until I tell you, but they were uh, abusing them and it was kind of like it turns into a manslaughter charge. The law is very, very gray, depending on the circumstances. So this is why it's a very, very difficult area. But no, we cannot allow our, you know, uh, corporations to start deciding who they will, de- you know, open an account for who they won't, because you and I and any conservative that has been so under attack, libertarian to the, you know, skewing to the right, um, I think would have this exact same problem if we allow businesses to have this kind of autonomy. So that can't happen either. So we really have to find and define this this area of law much better. It'll be interesting because um, obviously banks are federal in this country, federally regulated. Their incomes the federal government when those decisions come about. Real quick, I know you only have about 60 seconds, but I look through the lens of everything now as defund the police because that was the dumbest thing I've ever heard of in my entire life. And to think that we had to have this thing go to the Supreme Court about whether it was okay to take somebody's debt and give it to somebody else that didn't enjoy the benefits of that debt. I can't believe morally and ethically to my core, real quick, this is unbelievable that we even got this far you have 20 seconds what do you think about that uh, I, I said from the jump that it was completely unconstitutional and obviously the Supreme Court ruled that the Congress absolutely has to get more involved if there's this is a major questions doctrine and it's not going to stand and you're right you cannot the government is the creator of nothing they simply transfer right Scott so now they're going to decide who gets the transfer because they make too much or they don't make enough right. I mean this is ridiculous right. on its face it was so ridiculous it was like what where did this come from and thank God that they got slapped down because we can't have these presidents coming up with these policies that are just so outrageously yeah, crazy I, I can't based believe, on nothing i can't believe it was six to three that's that was one of my big problems number one number two is usually they're, they're they redistribute wealth now they want to redistribute debt that's crazy right. <laughs> i appreciate it thanks for coming on i love rebecca thanks very much for everything great content have a happy holiday rebecca walzer thank you very much for being on the show now you know i've got